Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rye Free Reading Rooms, Tales for Tots. My name is Granny Jean, and I hope you'll all help me uh, with this program. Last time, we had a kookaburra song, and I thought that my kookaburra was broken. But here's the kookaburra who lives in Australia on the other side of the world. And that's his song. And it does sound like he's laughing, right? Right. Kookaburra. <laughs> he's a kookaburra. But the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Just like the kookaburra. <clears throat> For your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Absolutely. What a beautiful day. Oh, let's go for a rowboat ride. I have a creek out here. We can go right up when it's high tide, right? So get your life jackets on, buckle them up. That's right, and get in the boat very carefully and sit down. Now, do we turn a motor on? Not in a rowboat, right? We're the motor. Okay, so here we go. You ready? Get your oars, your paddles. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Oh, that, that tide is really going out. It's going faster. Oh, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Oh, we're out in the marina already. Gracious sakes, and that tide is coming out fast. So we better go back up before we lose all our water, right? It's gonna be harder, so turn around. Uh, uh, uh. There we go, now we're gonna go up the stream. Row, row, row your boat gently up the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Oh boy, <coughs> that was a great ride. That was a great ride, and we saw some birds on the way too. <clears throat> but another part of the country, there are a lot of farmers and what are they doing now? I see them out here in their gardens. And they're planting, planting all the food so we have something to eat, right? <clears throat> now, do we know how it grows? I think most of us do, right? So here we go. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or no everyone know or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Sure we do. Take the seeds. First, the farmer plants the seeds, stands erect and takes his ease, stamps his foot and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Now, what does he have to do? What does a seed need? Water, right? Next, the farmer waters the seed. As he stands erect and takes his ease, stamps his foot and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. What do you think he does next? Hmm? Oh, look at all those weeds growing. The weeds are gonna take up all the vitamins. We gotta get them out of there. Next, the farmer hoes the weeds, stands erect and takes his ease, stamps his foot and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how, how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Now, how do those peas get on your plate? I don't know, but let's see what happens. Now they're growing, growing up vines and beautiful stalks. Now he has to harvest them. That means he cuts them down. Next, the farmer harvests the seeds, stands erect, then takes his ease, stamps his foot and claps his hands and turns around to view the land. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Oats, peas, beans, and barley grow. Do you or I or anyone know how oats, peas, beans, and barley grow? Well, some of the corn goes to the mill to get it grind into flour, ground into flour rather, and the barley, right? Barley and the oats, they go to to be processed for for our breakfast, right? Sure, you have Cheerios, don't you? Or oatmeal, that's where the oats are. And peas and beans, yeah, they're on your plate, I think at dinner time sometimes, right? Sure. So if it weren't for the farmers, we would be in a sorry mess, wouldn't we? Well, 
let's see, Wizzy Wizard, before we start our first book, do you have, where are you? Oh, here you are. Do you have a tip for us today? Oh, yes, Granny Jane, I know. Oh, what is that tip? Hmm? What is that tip for today? Well, when you read to your children, from time to time, turn the book uh, upside down or maybe uh, backwards and, and uh, see if your children notice. And it's a good way to see what they have learned about how to handle a book. Most important for them to know what the cover is and the back of the book, the beginning and the end, um, most important for their learning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now my first book today has this little animal in it. Do you know what this little animal is? It's a porcupine and he lives in the woods or she, and they're very, they're not very big. They're about this big. And what they have are quills. And when they're not frightened, they lay straight like that. But when they get frightened, woo, or if a, an animal comes that wants to eat them, these sharp pointies stick up. And boy, oh boy, that animal leaves him alone. So if you see one in the woods, don't try to pick it up. He'll be frightened. Yes, he will. And he's in this book. And it's called Hello, Baby. Hello, Baby by Mem Fox. <clears throat> now, animals have babies too, just like we do, right? <clears throat> Oh, baby. Oh, oh, who are you? Oh, he doesn't. Who has a tail like that? Are you a monkey with clever toes? No. Perhaps you're a porcupine twitching its nose. Uh, did you guess? Did you guess? All right, that's the animal we just saw. Are you an eagle exploring the skies? Oh, that's a big bird. Perhaps you're a gecko with rolling eyes. His eyes go like this. Are you a lion with dust on its paws? Perhaps you're a hippo with yawning jaws. Where are your jaws? Here they are. Are you a leopard uh, dozing in the dusk? Look at that. Dozing is sort of half sleeping. Uh, perhaps you're an elephant wielding a tusk. What's a tusk? It's that big tooth that sticks out of the elephant's on the outside of his mouth. Are you a warthog, hilarious and hairy? Perhaps you're a crocodile, silent and scary. Oh. Are you a zebra? Sipping a drink. Is that a zebra? No. No. I live in Africa. Perhaps you're an owl with a wicked wink. It's pretty hard to do, isn't it? No. Are, uh, then who are you, baby? Wait, let me guess. Are you my treasure? The answer is yes. Hello, baby, by Mem Fox, illustrated by Steve Jenkins, who has wonderful uh, illustrations for um, <clears throat> nonfiction books, too.
gracious. We do need a little bit of rain once in a while, don't we? Sure. As farmer did, right? It's raining, it's pouring. The old man is snoring. Bumped his head on his bed and couldn't get up in the morning. Oh, poor old man. Let's see. It's raining, it's pouring. The old man is snoring. Bumped his head on his bed and couldn't get up in the morning. Well, I don't have to bump my head not to want to get up sometimes, especially if it's raining. Yeah, I used to snuggle down in that bed. <clears throat> well, look who we have here. I did see a robin. So let's see what we have here. <gasps> What's this? A nest. It's a little house for a bird, right? How about three baby robins, hungry as can be, waiting for their dinner? Where can Papa be? Mama flew off to find another bug. Three baby robins in their nest so snug. Oh, here comes Papa with a worm so pink. Busy little parents, very tired, don't you think? Yeah. Oh yeah, we want the we want that worm. Yum 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 yum. Yeah, that's what they eat. Bugs and worms. Three baby robins, hungry as can be, waiting for their dinner. Where can Papa be? Mama flew off to find another bug. Three baby robins in their nest so snug. Oh, here comes Papa with a worm so pink. Busy little parents, very tired, don't you think? <laughs> well, let's see, we have another book today. It's about colors and about street signs. If you are going big enough now to be walking, maybe to school when you get to be five or six or seven or eight, you'd be going walking to school with mommy uh, or daddy, and then you go by yourself when you're even older, but you have to know how to read the signs, right? So this is how we learn. Red light, green light. And the cars have to too, right? And this is by Yumi Hill. <clears throat> Let's take a ride. Here's your seat. Buckle up, right? We'll drive down this one way street, right? All the cars just go one way. They don't come back the other way. <clears throat> Not too fast and not too slow. Whoop. Traffic light says green. Let's go, right? Yeah, green means go. You still have to look both ways. Absolutely. <clears throat> Sirens ringing and lights flash. Pull over. What does that sign say? Uh, let fire trucks pass. Yep, you always stop for them. They have a very important job to do. So it's the, it's the rule, right? We all go by the rules. Busy town, cars on the go. <clears throat> Changing light, yellow means slow, slow down. <clears throat> How to know who goes, who stays. This sign says, <clears throat> stop. Stop, look both ways. Oh, we always do that when we cross the street, right? When we're big enough. <clears throat> <clears throat> now what's this, a big train? <clears throat> <clears throat> Blinking light, gate blocks. There, the gate comes down. Ding, 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 ding. Railroad tracks. Here comes the train. Oh, we make sure that we are way far away from those tracks when that train comes by. Let's share the road. But with who? Oh, bicycles go on the road, right? Wave hello. What does that say? Bicycles are here. Watch out. A bike rides too, not just cars. Slow down car, 
the brake <clears throat> brakes go poop pop oh my goodness slow down car the brakes go pop traffic light says red let's mean stop right red means stop seems though i'm making up my own words here all right <laughs> well hey this place is really cool what is this place huh look at all those children what do you think is there well, this sign tells us students teachers slow for school right they're all coming to school All the driving round and round. At last we're here. Ah, what does that sign mean? It's the playground. Right. It's the playground. So that's you be very careful when you're driving a car near a playground. Because why? There are little children there. Right. So be careful no matter what. Yes. <coughs> Well, if you're wearing red, see if you can play this game with me. If you're wearing red, stand up. If you're wearing red, stand up. If you're wearing red, won't you please stand up and take a bow? How do you bow? Yeah. Okay, if you're wearing blue, stand up. If you're wearing blue, stand up. If you're wearing blue, won't you please stand up and take a bow? Hmm? Were you wearing blue, huh? How about girls or some of the girls might be wearing pink? If you're wearing pink, stand up. If you're wearing pink, stand up. If you're wearing pink, won't you stay, please stand up and take a bow? Yeah. If you're wearing yellow, stand up. If you're wearing yellow, stand up. If you're wearing yellow, won't you please stand up and take a bow? Sure. If you're wearing green, stand up. Whoops. If you're wearing green, stand up. If you're wearing green, won't you please stand up and take a bow? Hey, that's pretty good. You know your colors, huh? Sure. Well, let's see, how about purple? Anybody wearing purple? If you're wearing purple, stand up. If you're wearing purple, stand up. If you're wearing purple, won't you please stand up and take a bow? Yeah. How about black? Are you wearing black? If you're wearing black, stand up. If you're wearing black, stand up. If you're wearing black, won't you please stand up and take a bow? Well, we have brown, right? If you're wearing brown, stand up. If you're wearing brown, stand up. If you're wearing brown, won't you please stand, stand up and take a bow? What do we forget? White? I think we did. If you're wearing white, stand up. If you're wearing white, stand up. If you're wearing white, won't you please stand up and take a bow? How did you do, huh? I hope you did very well, and I'm sure you did. <clears throat> well, boy, is my yard full of daffodils today. Daffy Down Dilly has come to our town in her yellow petticoat and pretty green gown, right? Daffy Down Dilly has come to our town in her green petticoat and pretty green gown. In her yellow petticoat, I should say, right? Yellow, yeah, that's yellow. <clears throat> well, we have a book today, The Owl and the Pussycat, a very old poem by Edward Lear with very sweet illustrations. The Owl and the Pussycat, oh. <clears throat> well, look, there they are. <clears throat> it's like they're in some sort of a forest, doesn't it? 
The owl and the pussy cat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. <clears throat> and they took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up at the stars above <clears throat> and sang to a small guitar. Oh, lovely pussy, oh pussy, my love, what beautiful pussy you are. You are, you are. What a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, oh, you elegant fowl. Ah, how charmingly uh, sweet you sing. And there she is. Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried. <clears throat> but what shall we do for a ring? Hmm? <clears throat> they sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. There they are, out on a boat. And there in the wood, a piggy wig stood with a ring at the end of his nose, his nose, his nose, <clears throat> with a ring at the end of his nose. Can you see the ring? <laughs> Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? Said the piggy, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. And there's the old turkey. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they all <coughs> ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand, on the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon. The moon, the moon, they danced by the light of the moon. Look at them dancing. And that's me. What a silly poem, right? <clears throat> but that's fun. That's fun to be silly. <clears throat> it is springtime, it is springtime, winter's gone. Winter's gone, summertime is coming, summertime is coming. It won't be long, it won't be long. Does that tune sound familiar to you? Yeah, we sang it to Frere Jacques, didn't we? Right, are you sleeping, Brother John? So here, sing it with me. It is springtime, it is springtime, winter's gone. Winter's gone, summertime is coming, summertime is coming. It won't be long, it won't be long. Right. Well, we're not gonna find an ocean near here, so we're gonna have to go and traveling a bit. Find an ocean, should we find an ocean somewhere? Where is an ocean? Oh, look at that. We've gotten to the sea, right? And what do I see? But a ship, a big sailing ship. I saw a ship a sailing, a sailing on the sea. And oh, it was so laden with yummy things for thee. There was candy in the cabin and apples in the hold. The sails were made of silk and the mast was made of gold. The four and 20 sailors that stood between the deck with four and twenty white mice with chains about their necks. The captain was a duck with a packet on its back. And when the ship began to move, the captain said, quack, quack. <laughs> Can you do that with me? Come on. <clears throat> I saw a ship a sailing, a sailing on the sea. And oh, it was so laden with yummy things for thee. There was candy in the cabin and apples in the hole. The sails were made of silk and the mast was made of gold. The four and 20 sailors that stood between the deck 
were four and twenty white mice with chains about their necks. The captain was a duck with a packet on its back. And when the ship began to move, the captain said, quack, quack. How silly, huh? Well, let's see these little guys. Are they, they were put to bed. And what are they doing? Are they taking a nap? No, they're not. Five little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. Four little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. <laughs> Three little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. Two little dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. One little dinosaur jumping on the bed. He fell off and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. No more dinosaurs jumping on the bed. It's dangerous. <laughs> I know when I was four years old, I had a big cut on my head from not doing that. So I'll tell you what, before we say goodbye, why don't we sing the kookaburra song just once, okay? Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bushes he. Love, kookaburra, love. Kookaburra gay, your life must be. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Counting all the monkeys he can see. Stop, kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, that's not a monkey, that's me. <laughs> we'll leave out the other verses because it's getting time now to say goodbye. So goodbye to my little porcupine. Goodbye to our good fair farmers who, who grow our food. And bye-bye to Mr. Mouse, it's time to say goodbye. And bye-bye to the kookaburra. And bye-bye to the busy daddy. Possibly. What have you given up to? Oh, there we go. Oh, and goodbye to the old man who finally woke up. Goodbye, everyone. Bye, Granny Jean. Goodbye, all my friends. <laughs>